Now, to introduce more formally Stephanie, our first speaker. So Stephanie French heads the acting for theater, TV and film and directing tracks at East Strasbourg University, where her most recent directing includes The Tempest, Smart People, The 39 Steps, and The Crucible, amongst many others. Her book, written with Philip Bennett, Experiencing Stanislavski Today, Training and Rehearsal for the Psychophysical Actor, links acting technique to yoga and contemporary cognitive science. Stephanie's presentation is titled Psychophysical Actor Training for the Small Screen. Stephanie? Right. Hello, everybody, and welcome from around the world. Since uh, we're talking about how to get connected in our bodies on the screen, I just want to start. Um, I'm going to stand up and I invite you to stand up wherever you are. We can't see you. I'm going to, um, and just since we're afraid of breath right now because of this crazy pandemic we're all living through, but in this safe space of the small screen, we can breathe together. And I, I'm asking you to take three breaths with me. We'll, we'll inhale and, and move your hand up the center line of your body and exhale and release it down. And just feel your feet firmly planted on the ground and your head moving up towards your ceiling so that you're really extending between at least those two points and your, your arm as the third point. And so all together now, allow the breath to fall in and release out and fall in and release out and one more time okay i just want to do that as a start I thought it's nice to breathe together, even if we can't be in the same space. All right, so I'm going to turn into a PowerPoint and you can still see the speakers on the side, I guess, or however you want to do that. Um, okay, so Okay, all right. Um, so, not sure why it's jumping around. There we go. Okay, so the presentation is on psychophysical actor training for the small screen. And like so many of you, I have been working, teaching on the small screen. We, we moved online mid-semester in spring semester, so around March of last year, taught there until the end of that semester and have been fully online for fall. And we will already know that we will be fully online for spring semester as I teach in the United States where things are insane at the moment with COVID. Um, I also just uh, finished filming. We, uh, I worked with a group of actors to write an original screenplay. We, we took a month to write a screenplay and we just finished filming it and we are now in the process of editing. So, all right. Sorry, it's moving faster than I wish. Okay. Um, okay, so just, I like to give uh, honor to my legacy. It's, it's from the oral tradition. I didn't learn the system from books um, until much later, but it, originally I learned it from the oral tradition through Stanislavski to Bakhtangov to Sonia Moore to Philip Bennett, who is actually on this call, and then to me. And uh, yeah, this is just, um, I wanted to take a breath because breath connects directly to the, some of the key things about acting for us, which is inspiration and um, the idea of imparting a truth through our work that we're trying to always do. So basically what I've done since I moved uh, online to online teaching is I thought, you know, we are Many, most of our students want to work in television and in film as well as in theater. And so why not take this opportunity where we're sort of forced into the screen acting um, to, to direct their acting towards acting for television and film with the idea that we can scale it up later for the theater. Because we, um, we do that anyway, we train them for the theater and then we scale it down for the screen and there's no reason we can't also work the other way. As, as all of you that are teachers know, and all of you that are actors know, the basic tenets of acting are the same in both mediums. 
So I wanted to just bring up this famous drawing of Stanislavski um, that came late in his work as he really started to try to pull it all together. And I just think that it's very interesting that as he pulled the different aspects of the system together, and I'm gonna give you um, one with the translation from my colleague, Philip Bennett from the Russian. So this will be on the website. It's very small to look at right now perhaps, but um, when it's on the website, you can blow it up and look at it in more detail. I just think it's very interesting that when he wanted to describe his system in one visual image, he chose an image that very much relates to the human body. And um, when I saw this image, the first thing I thought about with it, besides the lungs, which I think are pretty obvious, and, and I know that he was working so much with the central nervous system and trying to use these two things to activate um, on cue an actor. But I also think it's very interesting that he put these other things along the spine, which I'll be talking about today. And for me, I immediately saw a connection to the chakras from yoga. Um, I grew up with a mother as a yoga teacher, so I learned yoga very early. And when I started learning the system, I immediately saw the connections to yoga, which I didn't know actually were true until much later, until I was exposed to Sharon Carnegie's work and letting me know that in fact, the system was pretty entirely based on the psychophysical aspect of it based on yoga. So um, I think that I look at a couple things. Psychophysical conditioning is paramount before we get into anything else. And so um, we have to develop the lungs. We have to, uh, we can borrow from yoga, from pranayama. Certainly every aspect of our vocal training develops uh, your facility with breath. And later in your acting, you really need to learn how to connect the breath to what you're doing. So we can certainly work with that online. Sorry, I keep jumping because I touch my screen. Let me go back. Um, okay, here we go. So I, I also think um, we're always working with the nervous system. One of the most important ways, and we can certainly do that online. I like to think instead of focusing, I, imagination obviously is key to acting and, and imagination is key to acting for the camera as well. But we can also, even though we're not directly um, communicating sens sensorily with our audience, we can use what I call sensory recreation. So that instead of using the term imagination, I like to use the term sensory recreation where we create the world that we are inhabiting the world of the character's world through all of our senses, okay? And as you get moving on in your various movement training, you will get to a point where you not only can um, direct your energy, but you begin to become aware of which part of the body is activated and you can, you can develop an awareness to the level of being aware of which chakra is activated for different things. So it can be activated by a trigger that the character is experiencing. It can be activated by your, your own mind as well. Okay, so then um, my other thing about this time period is that instead of going bigger, we can go deeper because we can't go bigger right now, but if we go deeper, we have more fuel for when we want to go bigger later that we can expand that out. We have the content for it. So I always start my work with actors online with, with some sort of tuning in that involves breathing or meditation together. And then I do a few exercises. I borrow a lot from yoga since I have that background. Um, you know, you certainly could borrow from any martial arts that you know, any dance that you know. Um, and we have a bunch, Phil and I have a bunch of exercises in our book as well that begin to make these psychophysical connections. So I always also ask the actors because of the wanting to have that communication going on between the mind and the body, I always get us to work with um, awakening the spine in some way. I find some of the best exercises for this are twists. Um, I do a series of arm swings that just um, starting at, at hip height, moving to waist height, moving to chest height, um, you can allow the hands to kind of hit your body, which is, comes from Qigong, a kind of stimulation of the body. But the important thing is getting the spine to become more articulate all up the levels. Um, obviously, uh, the old classic theater, uh, rolling up the spine, um, stacking one vertebrae on top of the other exercise is excellent. And then um, I find it very helpful, too, to get 
people more alert with various sensory uh, recreation types of exercises. All right, so. Um, the other thing though, is to get this to be really psychophysical is that we need to connect the, the mind to the body and, and, and that helps by bringing it into the given circumstances, whether they're from a play or whether these are given circumstances that you are um, imagining to connect an exercise to given circumstances to make it psychophysical. So now I want to lead into a little demonstration. I had some actors do a video so I can demonstrate an exercise to you. So this term, the anatomy of thought, comes from my colleague, Phil Bennett. And I'll, I'll talk about where he, where that led uh, from him. So the question is, how do we follow the subtle movement of a sensory trigger in, into thought? And then how do we trace that trigger through from our mind and into our body? How do we express it through action? How do we lead each audience member through this journey too, so they can experience it? So one of the things I feel really strongly about is that I'm not looking for actors to just emote in general. I'm looking for them to emote in response to specific triggers that they have lined up um, through, through the role, through the journey of the character so that we are leading our audience through the journey of the character moment by moment. And so I want to introduce an exercise that I know a lot of people are not familiar with. It was originally created by Sonia Moore. She was inspired by some of the musings of Aristotle. And she, she described it in this way. So we, we call the exercise wed gag and W means wonder and E evaluate, D decide, gesture, act, gesture. Um, and, and, and it will make more sense, I think, just for me to demonstrate this exercise. So pardon me while I stop sharing this screen and I go to sharing um, another screen where I can give you the exercise. Okay. Called wed gag, which stands for wonder evaluate decision, and that decision has a, a gesture that expresses what that de decision feels like. And then we make an action, in this case, to look at or not look at your lover's journal. And then you can take your time to either read it or decide not to read it. And then there's a final gesture of, was that a good idea or not? I've now broken their trust or I've not, or I chose not to break their trust and I put it back, whatever you decide. Okay, so we're going through the sequence. Um, so you've got your journal, your lover's journals on the table, and we're going to just come up from as though we've just walked into the space and we discover it. You can walk in if you want to. Okay, you can walk in from off screen. And I'll talk you through the sequence and you, you discover it. So that is the moment of wonder first. And then evaluate. Let that all go through your spine. Is it a good idea or not? Should I look at it? Should I not? And at some point in that evaluation, you're going to make a decision. Let that decision be a clear moment and have a gesture. And then act, go to that journal. Even once again, you're evaluating, should I open it? Should I not? Am I going to do this? Am I going to violate their privacy? Am I going to let it go? Remember, we decided there's something wrong going on in your relationship and you really want to know. So let those things be at war. And then decide either to look or not to look. And then let's have a final gesture before you walk out of the frame again of whether that was a good idea or not. So you can either put it down or walk out of the frame with it and decide whether that was a good idea or not.
Okay, great. And come back. And this time we're going to do it one more time. And just want to remind you that the steps are you, you discover it, which is where you, you just, it's a moment of wonder or discovery. And then you evaluate. And then you decide and let that be reflected in a gesture through the small, subtle muscles on your spine and through your spine. And then you act in some way. And then you have a final gesture that expresses whether that was a good thing or not. Okay. So see, do your best to remember as many of those steps as possible. After a lot of training, these steps become second nature and you don't need to really think about them. They're just always happening. Okay. So when you're ready, go ahead and, and begin and go through the whole sequence. Okay, come on back. All right, I'm gonna come back to sharing the PowerPoint with you. So um, you can, those actors were Abigail Witt and Jamil Joseph, so thanks to them. And I just want to note that you can add WEDGAG into your verbal and nonverbal training improvisations, all the action improvisations that um, you might do based on Stanislavski's work. You can add WEDGAG to all of them if you train it early. Um, I usually find that doing a simple one such as to sit in a chair first and then creating circumstances around that, having the actors come up with their own circumstances about why they shouldn't or should sit in the chair um, is a good starting place. And then you can add it to any kind of improv after that. So I train in the psychophysical conditioning and then um, we get into verbal and nonverbal action improvs. I'm finding they're working just great online. And, and then when I do scene work with the students, I do active analysis with them online and I get them to do it with each other in their meetings, which may take place um, through FaceTime or Zoom or some other medium as well. So WEDGAG is a good basis um, for acting with the camera. And so is another technique called telling the novel, which I'll just go over very, very quickly, but I won't be demonstrating. You have about two to three minutes left. Okay, so, thank, thank you, you. Stefan. So um, basically uh, this will be on the website so I'm gonna have to rush through it a little bit but um, you can clarify the given circumstances. I find it helpful to mark the beats before you do this exercise and then um, to identify the character's need, the, char the problem that they're str struggling with and the desired solution and get them thinking about the magic if, and then to work actively on their feet. So usually what I do is I demo using a couple of actors and I really talk them through the whole exercise um, in front of the class for others, using Zoom to spotlight the actors that I'm working with. Um, and then I have them work within a 10 by 10 space if they can create that around their computers, have all the props. Um, and they should work only two to three beats at a time, maximum one page. I personally break down telling the novel into three parts. Step one is working with inner dialogue. And basically they, they say the inner dialogue and then they say the line. And then they, the second part is they just say the line 
while they're still thinking the inner dialogue. And all the time working with inner dialogue is getting that, that inner thought to be reflected through the subtle movement of the spine that they've trained in through WEDGAG. So they're working with inner dialogue being reflected through the body. Then I work with tonal subtext as well, which is much more about how they say the line and yet of course what they're intending to communicate really affects how they, uh, how they move physically and moves them into action as well. And sometimes actors can come to action more easily through the tonal subtext than they can through the action or vice versa. But they'll do the same thing. They'll say the tonal subtext and then the line trying to fulfill what it is they're trying to communicate. And then they'll just say the line and still trying to fulfill what they're trying to communicate. And then the last one, and this will be my last slide, is that they do it with action. So all of you, I'm sure that work with Stanislavski work with action and putting it in the transitive verb for, form is so helpful to accuse someone, to deny someone. Um, and so then you'll say the action and then the line, and then the other actor says their action and their line, and you do that back and forth. And always when you say the action, you're trying to fulfill it with the line. Then you say only the line trying to fulfill the action. And then in, in both the first and this last exercise, I often will take the script away again. So I'll have them say the actions back and forth between the actors, the actions, fulfilling them physically and not saying the lines at all. So forcing them to communicate non-verbally. And you can do the same on the inner monologue exercise, going back to just uh, communicating through the inner monologue, through the language of that inner monologue that they've discovered. Okay. All right. So hopefully that was not too long. And thank you all for being here. And thank you, Stefan, Jonathan, and Paul for hosting us.